I lose dopamine cells, I simply replace them. I mean, nothing very clever about that. So is it your view that this is going to be a viable therapy over the next five to 10 years? Today I'm with Professor Roger Barker from the University of Cambridge. I'm going to talk about stem cell therapies. Don't forget to subscribe for a regular video every Thursday. So Roger, obviously one of the main things that happens in Parkinson's is the loss of these dopamine producing cells in the substantia nigra, as we call it. Are there strategies to replace or, or repair those cells? Yeah, so there are basically two major approaches you can take. Well, three, I suppose, actually. One is you could say the dopamine cells are dying. Can we rescue them with some sort of growth factor, a fertilizer? Can we rescue this system that's there? And people have tried that with various different growth factors. The second option is to say the cells are destined to go anyway. Why not just replace them? So transplant in a new bunch of, you know, a couple of hundred thousand dopamine cells of the type lost in Parkinson's disease. Or thirdly, which is a bit more for the future, can we uh, coerce other cells in the brain uh, to turn into dopamine cells, which wouldn't normally be dopamine cells. So supporting cells in the brain, so-called glial cells, can we turn them into dopamine cells? So these are the sort of three main approaches people have taken. So I guess focusing on the second one, I think that's to do with stem cell therapy, isn't it? Can, can you explain what a stem cell is? And maybe what the different types of stem cells we can use are? Yeah, so stem cells are rather sort of generic term. So it's a term for a cell which divides. Uh, and replicates itself and then it can also turn into something else so the beauty of these cells is that in theory once you start with one stem cell they can just carry on growing forever so the advantage of that is obviously you have an endless supply of cells now obviously for them to be useful you have to persuade them that they need to turn into something that you would find helpful therapeutically or for working in the lab or something and for our discussion today obviously one would want them to turn into the dopamine cells of the type lost in parkinson's disease now, because a stem cell is just a dividing cell, there are many different types, as you say, Jody. So, so probably the commonest two, or the two that most people would know about, are for this particular sort of therapeutic, is one that comes from uh, IVF programs, in vitro fertilization, couples that can't have children, they have an egg fertilized in the lab, those uh, eggs uh, grow, they make little embryonic stem cells that we were all at one point in our life. So you were an embryonic stem cell, Jody. I was an embryonic stem cell. And then uh, you take those cells in those embryos which are no longer needed by the couple and you make a cell line out of them and then you persuade those, those cells to turn into the dopamine cells. So that's called an embryonic stem cell line. And that was first done in humans in 1998 by Jamie Thompson. Then the other type of cell is the so-called induced pluripotent stem cell, which was what Jini Yamanaka won his Nobel Prize for, which he did in humans in about 2006-07. And there what you do is you take an adult cell, like a skin cell, blood cell. You take that adult cell, you reprogram it, so you put in various factors to persuade it to go back into a stem cell. So it's induced into a stem cell, so you make it like an ES cell. And obviously you can then drive that into a dopamine cell. There are lots of different types of stem cells, but for the type of therapies we're talking about, we really only talk about two types, which are embryonic stem cells, primarily spare embryos, and induced pluripotent stem cells, which are reprogrammed adult cells. And obviously embryonic stem cells had problems, I guess the ethical considerations, but also just cost implications. You needed a lot of aborted embryos, as I understood it, to, to do one transplant. But the induced pluripotent stem cells have overcome those problems, is that right? Uh, partly right. So embryonic stem cells do carry with them quite a lot of ethical concerns in the sense that you're obviously taking a fertilised egg and the embryo has the potential to become a person. And in so far, in order to make an embryonic stem cell line, you would probably have to destroy that embryo. So there is an issue of destroying life in order to create that cell line. Now, it's slightly different to what you said in using you need several for one person. That is to do with human fetal material, which is rather different to stem cells. So if you make one stem cell line, in theory, you can just use that one line to treat everybody. So one destroy one embryo to make one line which could then in theory be used okay. for everybody. So, so in that sense, it's not as controversial as using human fetal tissue, which you're absolutely right, has been used in the past to try and repair the vein in Parkinson's disease, but it has ethical implications. You say induced pluripotent stem cells obviously don't carry that uh, particular ethical concern. Although obviously if you turn an adult cell into a stem cell, in theory, that still has the pot potential to become somebody what well, most people think about is well that's very exciting because if jody wanted a an induced pluripotent stem cell dopamine transplant couldn't we just use his own skin and his own blood to reprogram and make the relevant cells the problem with that at the moment is twofold really one is there is a sort of 
practical concern that that will cost a huge amount of money because of the amount of testing you would have to do to show it was of a clinical grade. And secondly, if you use the patient as their own source of cells, whilst it gets around some of the problems with the immune system not seeing it as foreign and rejecting it, you having declared yourself as having a condition, that condition will still be within the cells that you're making. So they might not be the optimal cells to use. So both embryonic and induced pluripotent stem cells bring with them slightly different concerns, slightly different advantages and disadvantages, but both, I would say, or both are definitely being pursued in clinical trials right now for Parkinson's disease. Building on that theme, I guess my understanding is experiments, like you mentioned earlier, were done on this about 20 years ago, and some of them were quite successful. So what's happened in the meantime? Why is it taking so long to get to, to further clinical trials? So the original work that was done to show that you could put cell dopamine cells into the Parkinsonian brain and they survived and had an effect really began in the late 1980s. And, and, and during the 80s and 90s and, and really up to fairly recently, the strategy was not to use a stem cell and convert it into a dopamine cell, but was to collect the early developing dopamine cells from aborted fetuses. So in order to do that, women would decide to have a termination of pregnancy and abortion. The tissue uh, would then be collected uh, by a separate team. The irrelevant area would be dissected out and then that would be transplanted into the brain of people with Parkinson's disease. Now that obviously has major ethical issues. There were practical issues, as you were alluding to earlier, in order to make enough dopamine cells or get enough dopamine cells to one side of the brain, you had to collect material from three or four or even more fetuses, ideally. And what all the that work showed over that sort of period of time was when it worked well, it worked very well. So patients who had it, uh, they could go for 20 years or no medication, return back to their preclinical pre-presentation baseline. So they didn't look as though they got Parkinson's disease, came off medication, normal scores, normal dopamine levels in the brain. Not everyone did that. That was certainly a minority. Some patients showed a modest response, some showed no, and some showed some side effects of involuntary movements with the transplant. So that inconsistency made it very difficult to take it forward <clears throat> as a therapy, because why would you go forward for it when there was a one in 10 chance you'd get a fantastic response, a two in 10 chance that you'd get a major side effect. It just wasn't a viable option in terms of getting a consistency of response. But what it showed you was it, it was possible to do it. The practicalities of getting that much tissue was clearly gonna be an issue. The ethics were clearly gonna be an issue. But it wasn't really until 2011 and 12 that the um, that the scientists managed to work out how we can make a dopamine cell from a stem cell. And having done that in the lab, it then needed to be converted into clinical grade protocols so it could be used on patients. And that has taken another 10 years. So actually, <clears throat> in the last five years, there are now been at least four trials of stem cell derived dopamine cells in people with Parkinson's, which comes on the back of 30 years of transplants using human fetal dopamine cells. So when can we expect to see the results of the current batch of clinical trials? Yeah, it's a good question. And um, it's difficult to answer that really. So the, I mean, one of the issues with these cells is once you put them in, they do take quite a while to settle down, turn into the cells you want, connect and have an effect. Obviously these early trials are really around just showing it's all safe, that there's no major uh, worries with them. So the Japanese trial uh, began in 2018 uh, and one would have expected to publish now if it wasn't for COVID coming along and sort of putting a massive hole in all of these programs for two or three years. The data from that, I imagine, will be out relatively soon. I have no inside information on it, but I would imagine that that, 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 that result should be forthcoming. There's a paper that was published uh, three years ago from a group in America at the Mass General where they took a patient's own cells, turned them into dopamine cells, transplanted them. And in that single case, it was shown that the procedure was safe. The patient felt much better, but on scanning, there was no change in dopamine levels in the brain. And on objective measures, there was no huge change in their clinical condition, which would tend to imply that not a lot of the cells had necessarily survived, but the patient definitely felt better. Another group in America finished their trial last May, and I would imagine their preliminary results will be out towards the end of this year. And we have just commenced our own study here and those results will probably be out in two or three years time. And what I would say is that comparing those results early on is gonna be important, but one wouldn't expect the whole answer to be there in those early trials in much the same way as when Christian Barnard put a heart into someone in South Africa all those years ago, showing you could do a heart transplant. The outcome for the patient was relatively poor in the sense I think they only lived for a few extra weeks, but it, it proved it was technically possible to put a heart in. 
so it was a step in the right direction. So I imagine if I had to predict what these trials will show, it will show a little bit of a mixed result, be a bit hard to interpret all, but I think the important thing will be it to show that it's safe, that it's feasible, and that there's some signal that the cells are surviving, turning into the dopamine cells and patients are benefiting from it. But the benefit from these cells may, may take many years. So it may be three to five years before we see the maximum benefit. So even though the results will be published, I would imagine in the next few years, the actual benefits may be another few years old. So is it your view that this is going to be a viable therapy over the next five to 10 years? I think these trials will be very important. I mean, there's, a, 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 I mean, whether I think they're viable or not, I mean, I do think they are but uh, it doesn't really matter what I think. It's what pharma thinks because they're the ones who are gonna take them to, to clinic. And, and there's a lot of big pharma investing in this. So there's a lot of belief, at least within big pharma, that this will become a viable option. And the reason why they are quite attracted by it was intuitively it's, it's quite easy to see how it works. I lose dopamine cells, I simply replace them. I mean, nothing very clever about that. Um, the manufacturing of them is relatively straightforward, at least it seems to be. It doesn't take very long to make a lot of cells, so it makes financial sense. It's a standardised process and there's a long history, as we've uh, discussed already, of this type of work showing benefits in some patients. So I think there's great optimism that it will pay off. I think the big challenge will be getting consistent results of a magnitude of benefit which is better than that which you can do with current treatments like deep brain stimulation at a cost which is affordable to healthcare systems. You can help us keep making this content by simply subscribing to the channel. And remember, there's a new video every week.